Welcome my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remember this. If you are joining me from Africa, Asia, Europe, America, Australia or any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contribution. Please, each time you watch my video, Go to the comment section and put down your comments. That is where we will learn from each other. We learn a lot from the comment section. I don't speak alone. I am speaking with you. You can equally contribute. You can criticize if you so desire. But do it constructively so that we can learn from one another. That is why we are here. Thank you so much for joining. Remember, you have to say what is happening in your own area. Whatever happens, if you see something, say something. Don't be silent. We cannot allow the conventional media to continue to change the narrative. We cannot allow the conventional media to continue to play down the situation. We will continue to bring the situation the way it is and say it straight the way it is without hating anybody. We are not preaching his speech. We are not talking down anybody. We say leave and let's leave. And for those who say we will not leave, just like the full agenda we have said, they will not leave either. Well, he has led this country in the last uh, seven or more years. I'm being joined by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Femi, uh, Mr. Femi Additional. <laughs> it's indeed interesting that I'm almost called you Femi Falano. <laughs> interesting that we just speak, uh, spoken with uh, Mr. Falano there. Thank you so much. We have two Femi's on the program today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Femi Additional, for joining us tonight. Thank you. How does it feel? Very good. You're gradually winding down. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> the president said he, he couldn't wait to, 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 to get out of office. I, I think uh, those of us who have been with him since 2015 are also counting that we can't wait to leave. What, what, what is it about that office that makes people want to, I mean, sometimes they just want to get out? It, it, it's a lot of uh, responsibility and then a lot of work and then Maybe a little appreciation from the populace. So by the time you are winding down, you can't wait to go. <laughs> Some people will say, but he asked for it. He yeah. was the one who, four times he said he wants to be president. Now he asks, why is he hurrying out? No, it's not a matter of hurrying out. It's a matter of constitutional limitation. He has maximum of eight years he can spend. He has spent seven and he years. had his way, if not because of the legal consultation, he may have left before the eight years, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I mean, do you feel fulfilled that you have worked in a government at this time in the nation's history? Um, uh, how do you think personally that you that you have written the record in the performance of this government in the last seven or more years? I mean, and uh, several months. Well, uh, your question is, do I feel fulfilled? At the personal level, I'll say yes. Because um, how many journalists, how many editors do we have in Nigeria? Many hundreds. If you are asked out of that lot to come and serve your country, to come and serve the president of that country, you can only be thankful to God. And then you have done it for seven and a half years. You can also only be thankful to God and maybe to your principal, who also appointed you and has result confidence in you up to this time. So, uh, I feel good. You, you then, think it was, it was a mod, I mean, you, don't, you, didn't, you didn't, when you were going into the office, you didn't think it was this difficult? No, I, I knew it was not a tea party. Mm. Um, I, I remember I wrote a piece two weeks ago in which I recalled the moment I was quitting my job to come and serve in government. That very morning I woke up and I started to cry. Because I, I didn't know what I was going in for. I had never been in government, and I didn't know what I was going to meet. I didn't want government, but I wanted to serve Muhammadu Buhari. That was why I came, but I wasn't sure what I was going to meet. Seven and a half years down the line, I'm glad I worked with <laughs> Now, but uh, would you say that the president and the man that you worked for has been able to fulfill his promises to Nigerians? I believe so. 
One thing we need to understand and appreciate is that there is no single president that will solve the problems of a country, all the problems of a country. It has never happened before. It will never happen anywhere in the world that a president will come or an administration will come and solve all the problems. No, that president and he, the administration he leads will do their bit and hand over to another administration that will continue. Perhaps uh, why some people will tomorrow morning wake up to what you have said now and criticize it is perhaps the euphoria and the steam in which the APC government came into power, preaching change. You think the expectations were too high? Well, there will always be criticisms, particularly in a country like this. You change the Naira, they criticize. You don't change, they criticize. You have electoral law, they criticize. You don't have, they criticize. Anything in this country will be criticized. So, um, criticisms, particularly if they are virulent and negative, should not bother us. What should matter to us is what we are doing and a concentration on that thing and making sure that we make a difference. But the point I was making is whether or not the expectations of Nigerians were higher than the capacity of the government to meet those expectations. With every administration, it's always like that. But precisely because uh, Muhammad Abouari defeated a sitting President uh, Gulag Jonathan and came with uh, the, the narrative of change, which was used in several other countries and won them election in nothing less than two or three other countries where that slogan was used. But the expectations were high. In the area of security, for example, would you say Muhammad Buhari is going to be leaving Nigeria better than he left it? No doubt about it. Nigeria is safer now than when no, he Muhammad will, Buhari he will met leave it? leave a safer country, no doubt about it. When he came in 2015, you couldn't be sure that Nigeria will exist in the next one month. As of 2015, what was happening was that nobody could confidently say that Nigeria will still be on the map of the world the following week, the following month, or the following year. But we saw that he came and he took the battle to the insurgents. When he came, insurgency was the main thing. And he took the battle to them. Then he became hydra-headed. Banditry joined, kidnapping for ransom joined, cultism joined, separatist agitation joined. How, how many challenges can one administration really, really confront? That's the, that's the issue with the Buhari administration. It was from day one till now, it was one challenge from one challenge to the other. No, but we also see some calm in the country now. You can compare mm -hmm. what we have today with what we had six months ago, one year ago. And in another six months, six months is enough time to finish what's on ground. And it's not unlikely. So you're saying that this government will finish off the secure, insecurity challenges it's in not this country? A, it's not unlikely. No, no, I mean, give us a... Security will always be a continuum in a country. Mm -hmm. America still has to be allowed to security. Other countries of the world still have to be allowed to security. You will never get to a time you will sit back and say, we are all sound, safe, and secure. No need to be at no, the alert again. No, you will never get to that point. So, even But some of our security needs are yes. very basic and the glaring in the sense that, I mean, basic in the sense that, for example, ability to travel between Abuja and Kaduna on the expressway. Can Nigerians sufficiently be able to do that? Can Nigerians jump on the train and travel without the fear of being bombed by uh, terrorists on, on that train from Abu Dhabi to Kaduna? Uh, is uh, the northeastern region of the country so clear that uh, um, uh, those who are doing aid work uh, will not have the fear of being attacked? Can they travel to, uh, through the Bronu Adamawa axis without Boko Haram uh, trailing them? And those are the basic issues. Can you go to the southeast? You saw what happened with Eboni, uh, the INEC office there. These are basic uh, issues. There will be crime. Uh, even in countries where they have low crime rates, there will still be one or two pockets of crime. Even in the United States, there are shootings here and there in the mall. But they, they have different uh, security challenges. But our own is that we have a rat tag, um, uh, uh, terrorist elements just around the country, everywhere you step to. But those who do those things, are they largely foreigners? A good number of them are Nigerians. And 
people will get a kind of country they work for. Most of them are likely Nigerians. If you make your government to be embattled from the one to the last, then you will hinder that government from doing what it wants to do for the country. Are you saying the insecurity is largely political? Uh, it's a combination. Uh, politics can be ruled out of it, but it's, it's a combination. It's a brew. It's a brew. But I believe that politics can't also be completely ruled out. One thing perhaps that a lot of people may not forget that has happened over the last few years under this administration is that perhaps more than in a long time, uh, I'm not sure when was the last time we saw Nigerians going out of this country and wanting to live in droves. They do. Uh, the Jaguar syndrome is so high. I mean, just in one country alone, in the first six or seven months of this year, we're seeing almost 70,000 Nigerians left for the United Kingdom. It's so bad that an average Nigerian wants to leave for, uh, for, for other climes. Not just now. The average Nigerian had always wanted to leave. And uh, it's not just in Nigeria. It's in most countries of the world, particularly in the third world. They want to leave. They always believe that the grass is greener at the other side. But why is it higher under your government? No, no, no. It will be simplistic to say. No, the figures are government. there, Mr. No, Fah no, Mr. No, Adesha, no, 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 I just put it to you no, that no, just no, only no. in the UK, no, no. more than what we have seen, at least in the last 10 years, that people have, want, have wanted to leave this country. And I've said to you, just uh, almost 70,000 in the first seven, seven months of this country that we have seen people leave for, for the United Kingdom alone. That is just one country. You see, the, the, the truth is that if you have an opportunity, to better your life in any part of the world. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. If you think migrating legally is good for you, all well and good, by all means go. But you can't now say because people are leaving, then it's a sign that something is fundamentally wrong. You don't think something government. is fundamentally no, wrong? No, no. This is our country. And you don't think something is it's wrong our, for people it, wanting to leave? It, it's our country. There are people who will never leave this country. You know people, a lot of people who love this country. But now, because they you want said to 70, better life. You, know, you said 70,000 people left. What, av what average is that out of 200 million? I'm saying to one country. Yes. Just one country. But what average is that out of 200 million Nigerians? There are Nigerians who will never leave this country, no matter how things are. There are Nigerians who say, this is my country, we will stay here. And you know what about the issue of brain drain? Several Nigerians wanted to leave because, I mean, if Nigeria is better, you don't think that people want to stay? No. There are, for every person that leaves, there are 100 people that want to stay. Now, on a final note, Mr. Adish, uh, Mr. Adishino, is the issue of oil theft. That is embarrassing, the kind of situation that we have found ourselves. Is there a commitment under this government to deal with, not only deal with it, to bring to book and name names, just like you promised that you are going to name names of terrorists. Up to now, we've now seen that happen. To be able to put uh, uh, names to these people who have uh, sucked the blood out of uh, the nation uh, polity dry. Yes, um, the development may have uh, worsened, but it had always been there. You see pipelines that were connected and uh, uh, passed to the sea. They said it had been there in nine years. Has this administration been there in nine years? So it shows you that it had been there. The fact that it was revealed under this administration should even be a plus. Something that predated the administration now found out under this administration should even be a plus. So it had been there. One thing we can be sure of is that when a prima facie case is established against these oil thieves, they will be brought to book. One thing the administration will not do is to begin to name people carelessly and recklessly without having established things against them. Mr. Adeshina, thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. I appreciate the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. But well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing.
we must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you notify each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remember bless. Bye bye. See you again. Thank you.